Hello and welcome to Connecting Hawaii Business on ThinkTech Hawaii. My name is Kathleen Lee, owner of Kathleen Lee Consulting, and I am your host for this program. ThinkTech Hawaii is currently live streamed on thinktechhawaii.com as well as on ThinkTech Hawaii's YouTube and Facebook pages. And viewers like you have the opportunity to ask us questions during the show by emailing them to questions at thinktechhawaii.com. For today's show, we will be talking about the True Initiative, and we have the perfect individual to go over it, True Initiative's Executive Director, Michelle Chung. Hey, Michelle, welcome to the show. Hey there, Kathleen. Thanks for having me here. Thank you for being here. So tell our viewers about yourself. Okay, so my name is Michelle. Um, I am the Executive Director of True. I was born and raised in New York and I moved over to Hawaii about a decade ago. And when I came here, I noticed a few things. The first is that the job market is really different. There aren't a lot of technology jobs out there. And then the cost of living is the same as New York, but the wage levels are a bit lower than New York. So, and so I, um, I ended up working for a local real estate company where I did their technology marketing and research. And ultimately I found True. So let's talk about that. True and the Hawaii Executive Collaborative. How are those two connected? Yep. So the Hawaii Executive Collaborative is an organization of about 60, 70 local businesses. Um, they're made up of the leaders of those organizations and they really stand for practical action here in Hawaii. They okay, adopted the pull up the first graphic real quick so oh, people yeah. can follow along with you. Okay. No, that's great. And so they um, they adopted the change framework. And so okay, the change so frame. Let's let's go, let's do that. Uh, change framework. Uh, that's that's our second graphic. I love how we're going. Over. <laughs> let's go over the second graphic. <laughs> no, that's great. So the change framework is a um, framework that was developed by the Hawaii Community Foundation and focuses on different areas in Hawaii that can use support. And so the Hawaii Executive Collaborative adopted the framework and now we have organizations in each of those letters to drive practical action and so true um, sits in the letter c community and economy and our mission is really to create higher paying jobs here in hawaii and we do that by um, trying to drive technology so we know that technology is one of the ways where we can be more productive more efficient um, and in hawaii there are a lot of organizations that use it really well and they excel and exceed. And then through COVID, you can see the organizations that were able to do that. Well, we want to rise the tide here in Hawaii and help other organizations adopt. And so you should, we went through the slide really quickly, but I do want to share the organizations and the people that are behind the true organization. Yep, that's it. And so I'm so thankful to have this amazing committee of leaders that really drives for change. And um, they have the mindset where, you know what, we're happy to share what we know to rise the tide here in Hawaii. Um, so some organizations will um, share what solutions they're using, what the pitfalls were, the best practices, how they evaluated the solutions. Um, some organizations will share oh, you know what, we've been having trouble finding data scientists. So we're going to develop a, a data academy within our organization. And this is how we did it. And when we tried it, this is what we learned. And so I'm really grateful to the organizations and the committee members who really lean in and share what, what they know, what their organizations have done um, to help everybody, yeah. That's uh, the organizations, that's graphic nine, right? These are the different um, mm -hmm. companies, local companies that have contributed to um, the True Initiative. Yeah. And I, I love how when we uh, started talking about you coming on the show to talk about the True Initiative, you had a case study for um, AI for call centers. So let's pull up graphics three and four. And Michelle, you can go over what that case study was about. Yeah. And so we try to share these different solutions that organizations have implemented through these use cases. Um, and so the first one that we did was AI for call center. This one was led by Central Pacific Bank. 
Um, they saw increasing call volumes. Help desk was just really busy um, and waited longer wait times. And they saw customer service decreasing. So it was a problem that they needed to solve and they wanted to share it. So their thought was, well, I'm not gonna compete on how well I do my help desk. So I would love for other organizations to benefit from the work that we put into it. And so they actually got interns to evaluate the different solutions. I love that part too. So then they're playing their part in workforce development and project-based learning. So they got interns to evaluate the different solutions out there. And they ultimately decided to go with Amazon Connect. And with that, um, the CIO there, Adrian Chi, who's absolutely amazing, um, she implemented the solution right before COVID. And then through COVID, she was also sharing the solution and what they were able to do with it. And of course, the need for it and the strength of it continued to grow. Um, it just it started out as one help desk, it ended up with five help desks. Now they're doing authentication on it and um, they're going to do Japanese um, customer service as well. So I think that's amazing. And then the benefits of it is also jaw dropping. So what Adrian was telling me is that they went from 700 calls a day to 200 calls a day because the system was able to do that um, to support those you know, commonly asked questions. And so I can imagine a solution like this helping other organizations. And so we do share that Adrian is really open and giving of her time. She's met with different organizations because every organization is a little different. They have their questions. So she'll share what she knows, how she did it. And the help desk manager will also come and share, you know, how she's um, implemented it and the impact it's had on her organization. So I think that's amazing. How many uh, companies or organizations are using AI for call centers currently? If you um, have an idea. Yeah, I have no idea, actually. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> and, um, we're solutions and vendor agnostic. So while Adrian did it on Amazon Connect, we also know that, you know, chatbot solutions are available in Google and Salesforce and other or and other solutions. So I know that within True, I've heard that three or four other organizations adopted Amazon Connect. Um, Doug Murdoch was on a session in True where he shared that Safe Travels uses Google Cloud solution. And then Dina Tierney was on with um, DCCA and, another, and uh, Hawaiian Homeland to share that they were able to do customer care centers with Salesforce. So I think the benefit of True is that vendor and tool agnostic, we're really here just to share. Um, nothing in it for me when someone makes a sale. <laughs> That's wonderful. And earlier you had mentioned the involvement of interns. So let's pull mm -hmm. up the fifth graphic and talk about CIMP. What does that stand for? It's the Community Innovation Mentorship Model. Yeah, and this is a- that. And let's, let's yeah. have like slides 11 through 15, just run through while you're talking, just so- Okay. <laughs> okay, so this is a model that um, Data House um, developed and shared, and their data house is a local integration company. They're celebrating their 40th birthday this year. Um, so they've been uh, a mainstay here in Hawaii, and they are really committed to giving back to Hawaii and to make sure that um, our students are prepared for the workforce. And so this model is one where a professional organization mentors resources, in this case, students to solve a real world problem. And so we've done a couple of, we've done one pilot, one project, and it's in its third iteration now. And each one helps to um, stretch the model a little. And so in the first um, pilot program, the Data House mentored UH students, they were engineering students, and they were able to modernize and digitize the animal quarantine process. How cool is that? <laughs> and I think, through it all, um, Data House, you know, shows what's what's available here in Hawaii. There are organizations that are tech forward, that are, you know, driving change. Um, and then UH students get practical work experience, project-based learning, and then they get to learn some of the soft skills as they're being mentored and um, as they work through that problem. And then animal quarantine 
actually has a solution at the end of it. So one organization at a time, five students at a time. And I have to share with you the story behind um, this pilot program. There were five students that um, were part of the program. Three of them were hired in as summer interns, and then two of them were brought on full time at Data House. And so for me, that's the power of a program like this. And of course, it really takes commitment on the part of our local employers. That's wonderful. And this is a collaboration with the DOE, is that correct? Yeah, the next one was. So uh, the spring after that, Data House, so we realized that a lot of our projects are not single function, right? They cross marketing sales, all of that. So um, in the second iteration, we extended it to an engineering firm, a local engineering firm called Belt Collins. So Data House and Belt Collins mentored students um, in the School of Engineering, but now we added, in addition to computer science students, we added uh, civil engineering students. And they created a stormwater utility for DOE. So when we asked which DOE entity we should work for, Waipaku raised their hand. And so we ended up working with Waipaku, who happens to have an engineering academy. And so their students were able to lean in on this project as well. So, um, so it was a, this was a great success in showing that, yes, we know problems, not all problems can be handled, you know, with one group of people, we need other functions. And this is one where everyone was able to um, collaborate and work together. Are you um, an HEC and, and the True Initiative looking to um, foster more of these connections or these collaborations with um, other government entities in Hawaii? Absolutely. So we're continuing to um, try to find great projects for this. Um, I talked to the hackathon people, the um, Hawaii hack, yeah. And our thought was that there are so many great ideas that come out of the hack. We want to help support in bringing that all the way through to the finish line. And maybe through a program like Community Innovation Mentorship Program, we can do that. And then the other thing I like to share is that this isn't a model where oh, only true, you know, can can keep it. It's one that, um, in the true spirit of true, <laughs> we want to share it out. And so, it's something where we hope other people will lean in on the framework. And so, my third iteration I'll share is HDC. HDC um, leveraged the model, um, and their manufacturers. Um, we put a call out to their manufacturers to see who would want support in the digital marketing arena. And so Ellen at HEDC um, was able to source students um, at BYU who are going to help a local manufacturer spicy ninja hot sauce in their digital marketing strategy. And, and then Servco, which is a true member, um, they ended up raising their hands and their digital marketing team is going to support our students and the manufacturer. That is that is awesome, I, I love it. Um, mm -hmm. When we return, because we will be going on a quick break, I'd love for you to go about um, and talk about the survey, uh, challenges that the industry has faced so far, highlighting events and all the other stuff. So let's talk about that when we come back. Stay tuned, everyone. I'm Mitch Ewan, host of Hawaii, the state of clean energy on ThinkTech Hawaii. Hawaii, the state of clean energy is about following the many clean energy initiatives in Hawaii. Hawaii, the state of clean energy appears weekly on ThinkTech Hawaii at 4 p.m. on Wednesdays. Thank you so much for watching our show. We'll see you then. Aloha.
Welcome back to Connecting Hawaii Business on Think Tech Hawaii. My name is Kathleen Lee, and our guest for today is Michelle Chung of the True Initiative. So we were talking about a, a survey right before we left off. Michelle, could you delve more into that? Yeah, so True has been showcasing solutions that our committee members um, have a need for or that we've heard of. And what I'd like to do is really hear from our businesses, our local businesses, on what their needs are. Um, we realize that within technology, there's such a broad range. Let's pull up and the link that um, so people can go to it. Um, okay, so like, tell us more about soliciting feedback from businesses. Yeah, so we'd love to learn um, where you use technology. So that if you have a really good solution, we'd love to amplify that and share it with other businesses um, where your needs are. So if there is a something that I, I know I should get into digital marketing, I know I should um, digitize my operation, whatever that need is, I'd like to hear what it is so that we can put some focus on it and be where you need us to be. And so I'm, I'm actually working with another organization called Center for Tomorrow's Leaders. And Center for, my, they're great. Center for Tomorrow's Leaders helps to develop and train the leaders of tomorrow. So they're in high schools, um, giving different leadership type um, education. And it, well, part of their program is that students lean in on a need in Hawaii. So we know that, um, there's an opportunity to use more technology here in Hawaii. And so the students want to support as well. And so what I love about this is our students were brought up in the digital age, right? So social media, digital, everything is, is native to them. So imagine connecting our youth with a business that maybe isn't as familiar with the technology. How amazing would that be? And so Center for Tomorrow's Leaders is also doing a project where they want to support local businesses. So there's um, five students that are looking for businesses to help. And so we're hoping that the needs survey will highlight those. And while I'm just working with one class, we know that there are a lot of students in Hawaii. And so if we believe in our developing our workforce and project-based learning and things like that, I think that connecting the two is really important. It just there's an opportunity there for us to really seize right now. I love how you have, you're working on so many collaborations with both private, nonprofit, government entities. Um, tell us about the upcoming events um, for True. Mm -hmm. Let's pull up the six graphic for that. Yeah, so we have a few. We've been trying to do a short format lunch and learn that's a lot more um, informal and interactive. And it really just invites the community to get together to see how people have done it and whether or not it's for them. So it's an open forum, very informal, but people, what I found in Hawaii is that everyone's really open to sharing, especially if it's to help my neighbor, right? So our next Lunch and Learn is gonna be around Teams. Everybody, well, I don't say everybody, but a lot of people know what Teams is. It's part of their um, Office 365 subscription, but not everybody knows how to use it well. And not everyone knows all the different things that they keep rolling out. So we hope to highlight some of those new things um, and just welcome the discussion. And then the other one is part of the Global Entrepreneurs Week. And so um, there's two that Hawaii that we are doing. One is this ideas to impact. Um, and then the second one is the women in tech. So I don't know if you've been to the women in tech series. It's an amazing series that HEDC puts on that just highlights the women that are driving and in technology here in Hawaii. Um, and then the ideas to impact is really for organizations that are looking for ways they can innovate. I think um, everybody knows that innovation is important, but it's elusive sometimes. But Data House has shared their formula. So they've been doing consulting for, I said, over 40 years. Um, what they did was consolidate and combine their best practices into this framework and they want to share it so that people can use it. <laughs> yeah, and then we have um, a few or, um, events lined up for December and January. I don't have the specific dates yet, but I can share that um, one is a round table. So 
Salesforce actually gives 10 free licenses out to nonprofits. So we think that helping our nonprofits use technology and CRM may be beneficial. It's just, we just wanna help and share. And so um, USJCs raised their hand and they, they said that they use Salesforce. They're happy to share the evaluation process they went through and then what the benefits are. I don't wanna go down this long route of trying to get on Salesforce only to realize that you know, it didn't give me the benefits that I had wanted. And it's not just Salesforce, it's any CRM. So we're also inviting um, Jennifer Oyer, who is a consultant nonprofit side. So she has a, a purview on the different CRMs out there. And we're also inviting Dina Tierney, who's helped a lot of organizations. But stay tuned. It's all on our website. So all of our upcoming events are on www.hec.org slash true. Great. And Michelle, tell us about the connection between all this and the sandbox. Let's pull up our graphic seven. Mm -hmm. So the sandbox, I don't know if you've heard this, Kathleen, the sandbox, we call it the front door to innovation. <laughs> and so that's what it is. We stand up technology, test and learn from it and share it with each other. In my mind, it's almost like the physical embodiment of what true is, space to collaborate, space to share. Um, it's a Spina Kaka'ako, it's a co-working space that is owned by HEDC and managed by Box Jelly. So we actually host a lot of our events out of the sandbox. Um, I'm here now, though you can't tell. <laughs> um, but it's open to the public if you want to rent space for use. They have a lot of um, meet spaces. There's a maker space in the back. Everything's on wheels, so you can, can make it any way you want. The walls are all whiteboard, and then they're digitally enabled, too, for those hybrid meetings that we've been having so many of. And before we pull up your contact information and the website, um, Michelle, can you go over some of the challenges that you or the tech industry uh, have encountered so far um, here in Hawaii? I think some of it is um, maybe mindset and not knowing where to start. At least, at least for me, when I was in an organization, um, I can see that there are so many opportunities. Which one do I lean in on? Which one do I focus on? Because you can't, you can't do all of it, right? So maybe it's in understanding what the results are. So our hope is that through True, you can get some of that information. Um, I think mindset is part of it also. And I, that's the first question I ask Kathleen when I'm like, oh, why, why, why aren't people using more technology? Why haven't they adopted? And most people are like, yeah, I have Michelle, you know, they have <laughs> in some way, shape or form. And then maybe it's in looking for ways that um, technology can benefit you even more, make your life easier, save your time. Um, you can use the data better. And so some of that is mindset and being able to say, I'm okay if it's not perfect, I wanna try it. And I think the most important thing is to take a step forward. That's, that's what I believe. And so gone are the days where you have to plan like a hundred steps ahead before you start the project. I think we're in a different time and technology enables it, right? With all these um, SaaS solutions, you don't have that upfront cost that you used to have when you take on a project. You can, a lot of the things you can just try. A lot of the things you can try for free, right? <laughs> you see like the 10 day free licenses or the, you know, one month uh, free trial period. I think it's in having that, um, being okay with trying it. And if it fails, great. And if it's wonderful, hey, let's double down, which is what Adrian did with AI for Call Center. Let me try on one help desk. Oh, with success? Okay, now I'm going to really grow it. Let's pull up your contact info, which is the uh, graphic 10. So I think you mentioned the website earlier and, and people can find you on LinkedIn, the website as well as the newsletter. Yes, so we've been, um, we post everything on our website. So if you wanna look for upcoming events, we also have our past events. So if you're like, I wanna, I was, I've, I've been considering AI for call center. Let me learn more about it. Or what the heck is AI for call center? <laughs> you can go to our website and check it out. Uh, LinkedIn also, we try to showcase the events that we're doing. 
some of our new findings. So Adrienne did her AI for call center back in May, but I keep hearing new things like, oh, now it authenticates and now my call volume is cut in half. Well, I'll try to share that on LinkedIn too. And then our newsletter comes out monthly, um, usually the first week of the month. Uh, so you can just opt in for that and you'll hear about all true things. <laughs> Wonderful. And Michelle, with the last few minutes that we have on our program, is there anything else that you would like to add? I would just welcome people to lean in, learn more about it, get involved. Um, this is a safe space where you can share what your needs are, what your questions are. And what I found is all the organizations and people that have been a part of True are just so giving of their time and information. So we welcome the collaboration and I hope that, um, that I see you <laughs> soon. Thank you again, Michelle. And thank you everyone for tuning in. We were talking about the True Initiative with True Initiative Executive Director, Michelle Chung. I'm Kathleen Lee and mahalo to Jay Fidel and the cool staff at Think Tech Hawaii for making programs like this possible. Today we had Michael and Haley helping us out. Tune in next time for our next Connecting Hawaii business. Aloha. Oh, huh.